Okay, so I've entitled my talk, Exploring the Evolutionary Diversity of Pathogen Interactions with High Throughput Image-Based Disease Quantification Screening. So every hyphenated specialty word there will be an important subject of this talk, but let's start with some preliminary background. So I'm working as a postdoctoral fellow in the Gutman Lab, where I've learned a lot about Pseudomonas syringae, so my favorite model organism that we study. And it's gram-negative bacterium, phylum gamma proteobacteria. It's notable because it's a, actually comprised, comprises of, comprised of an evolutionary diverse species complex of 13 distinct phyla groups. It's interesting from an evolutionary analysis standpoint. Also, because phenotypically, it actually infects, it's a notable pathogen of diverse crop plant hosts. So over 64 pathogenic variants identified to date. I'm just showing here some you know, common crop plants, some of them, you know, tobacco and coffee, which you might regularly imbibe, that sumo syringe can infect. It's a exemplary model organism for studying plant pathogen interactions. And Another brief background. So how does Pseudomonas syringae effectively infect such a broad array, array of plants? Well, first it's able to overcome pattern triggered immunity uh, receptors on the plant host, which respond basically to conserved bacterial surface exposed moieties like flagellin and lipopolysaccharide. Pseudomonas syringae overcomes this barrier to, to entry by possessing a type 3 secreted a secretion system, so a molecular syringe and an arsenal of effectors. So if soluble proteins that get secreted into the plant, so plant cell cytosol to suppress and subvert uh, pattern recognition. So that's the first layer of immune defense it's able to tackle and overcome. However, interestingly enough, uh, plants have evolved their own resistance repertoires of proteins, which uh, sense the activity and presence of, uh, of, of secreted effectors and trigger uh, and, re and respond through effector triggered immunity responses, basically preventing the, the spread of the pathogen. And this is an interesting system to study because there's a ongoing uh, co-evolutionary dynamics between the, on the pathogen side of the secreted effectors and on the host side with, uh, with uh, resistance proteins. So plants are responding to try to overcome uh, immunity elicitation. Effectors are rapidly being turned over or diverging. This makes a pseudomonas syringae fascinating to, to study from the comparative genomics aspect. But only till recently, 2019, uh, have, have so there been really like a large scale uh, comparative genomics uh, study of pseudomonas syringae been performed by actually the Devil and Gutman labs. So uh, 494 strains uh, were se of pseudomonas syringae were sequenced, which comprised a uh, majority of the evolutionary diversity of the species complex. So 494 strains covering 11 distinct phyla groups. And also this is a useful data set because majority of these strains uh, represent a broad range of host species of isolation. And by uh, previous uh, postdoctoral student, uh, Marcus Dillon actually formed, uh, def uh, defined the effectorome of uh, Pseudomonas syringae effectively through sequence homology searches. Over 14,000 effector sequences were refined into 894 distinct effector alleles and 70 effector families with variable distribution across the uh, across the syringe phyla groups you can see here. So we have this data set, which is a useful resource for investigating the evolution of pathogenic potential of syringe, the species complex as a whole, as reflected by uh, host immunity responses. And the screening that we can do to uh, investigate those responses is made possible by another useful uh, technology developed by the government and Devil Labs called PIDIC. It's the Plant Immunity and Disease Image-Based Quantification Screen, screening approach. And briefly here is just described as uh, just uh, spray inoculate your plants grown on these, uh, on these uh, flats, which uh, you wait for symptoms to develop, typically measured as uh, chlorotic tissue. So yellowing of tissue is your outcome. Uh, you photograph the plants, you run the PIDIC uh, image analysis software, uh, identify a uh, yellow uh, percentage of yellow disease tissue, which gives you corresponding disease score. So the more, the higher the disease score, the more yellow tissue, the greater the, the degree of chlorosis. And it turns out that this is actually a very useful metric uh, for efficiently in a high throughput manner, 
for screening uh, immunity elicitation responses of a, of a plant host, this case, Rhabdopsis thaliana to Pseudomonas syringae. And it overcomes a lot of the experimental, uh, well, it actually maps pretty well and correlates fairly uh, consistently, no, reliably to uh, gold standard approaches for measuring the uh, virulence and immunity elicitation uh, through bacterial growth, which requires a lot of destructive tissue uh, operations on the plant. So you can overcome all that with just simply taking an image of a plant. So combining all of this comparative genomics work with the PIDIC approach, um, uh, we have a very powerful high throughput means for assaying uh, plant uh, pathogen plant interactions. So this is uh, comes from a 2020 paper I'm presenting here, uh, to you from the Devo and Gutman labs yet again. Uh, this is soon a syringe type 3 effector compendium, which puts all the pieces together. Uh, Cytec for short is a 529 representative effector alleles from Pseudomonas syringe, the best in Pseudomonas DC screening for uh, ETI responses on the model Arabidopsis uh, or model host Arabidopsis aliana. Here's just like a section of, of one of these uh, PIDIC screens which was performed in this uh, high throughput analysis. So doing this high throughput analysis approach, 11 novel ETI listening families were, were recovered uh, with a screen and two novel plant NLRs. So these approaches can give us some unprecedented and useful insights into the coevolutionary dynamics of plants and their pathogens. And if we take all of those immunity, 19 immunity eliciting alleles and map them back into the phylogenetic context from which they came from. So this is the Pseudomonas syringae core genome phylogeny. In blue, here are the 19 effector ETI eliciting effector families, Arabidopsis thaliana, where the ETI eliciting alleles reside. We can see that actually majority, uh, the majority of ETI eliciting alleles uh, are low prevalence, but the collective phylogenetic distribution is vast. And so what this really means, the take home message is that Arabidopsis thaliana has a robust immune response to the entirety of the Sumerian syringate complex, but only mediated through a handful of, of effectors. So this is good in the, when we're just talking about the model host, uh, Columbia, uh, model ecotype Columbia, but what about how well conserved are these ETI responses across other uh, Arabidopsis thaliana ecotypes? So now we're endeavoring on uh, some current ongoing research <clears throat> analyses. Uh, this time we're looking at high throughput seedling spray at ETI assays, combining uh, over nearly 200 or Arabidopsis thaliana ecotypes sampled for you know, population genetic diversity, phenotype, geographic, and immuno immunologic variability. We're, we're going to repeat this spraying of SciTech against nearly 200 ecotypes now. But for this, we need actually a modified approach, which is developed by uh, previous uh, PhD student, uh, Alex uh, Martel. It's a modified version of the PIDIC uh, screening approach, except now we have, actually we're spraying effectors against seedlings of Arabidopsis thaliana in this sort of 48 well format. Actually, re in reality, we have 36 wells of ecotypes. Uh, so we can spray individual wells uh, one effector allele against 36 ecotypes at a time. It takes less time to grow. We do this in an efficient, high throughput manner. And we can also recapitulate uh, the ETI responses that we would see on full grown plants. So that's great. It's now experimentally feasible to do on such a large scale. So I'm going to break down kind of the results of this analysis that are ongoing into two parts. So first, we started with a primary screening. Uh, where we took 403 alleles of the SciTech compendium and screened against 71 ecotypes, a reduced screen to save, save time and material. And the challenge was actually identifying a set of candidate ETI uh, uh, eliciting effectors. So these effectors would have strong, at least a significant proportion of strong ETI responses across some of the ecotypes. Uh, to do this, we tried many, many approaches. And the one we sort of settled on was by looking at negative disease controls, so which is just uh, responses of the of 71 uh, Arabidopsis thaliana ecotypes against uh, Pseudomonas syringae DC3000, 
we looked at the lower tail of the most uh, of the strongest ETI eliciting responses given by the PIDIC disease scores here. So this would be used to determine the red line here indicates like the lower threshold of disease scores below which uh, a screened effector as being a potential ETI elicitor. We looked at, so this would be the mean lower quartile of the PIDIC disease scores that we looked at here. Correspondingly, we calculate the mean lower quartile allele archaeolos, PIDIC disease scores, uh, against uh, across the 403 screened alleles. And over here, I'm just summarizing what the results of this analysis look like uh, when we divide the, uh, our alleles into the different categories. So this would be our kind of reference set of previous ETI listening alleles that are identified on Columbia um, on the reference ecotype. And I showed you a couple slides ago. These are more generally from similar families to those ones that were identified in Columbia and some completely novel ETI listening interactions we were able to recover from, from different families. So when, once we expand the screen, you see the theme is you, you go larger and larger and you, identify, you go further and further out, you identify more novel, actually biologically interesting interactions. Okay, so selected uh, 45 representative alleles from these, from from this set of 170 from the previous analysis, 45 representative alleles for each family, and we expand our screen, including 123 additional ecotypes. So now we're at nearly 200 Arabidopsis thaliana ecotypes. And we rescreen to get actually this result here, which is you can think of this as the Arabidopsis thaliana immunodiversity landscape versus against the Pseudomonas syringae effector compendium. So here's uh, just a hierarchically clustered heat map. We have our 195 Rabidopsis thaliana ecotypes screen down the side here. And our here's 44 ETI listening effectors. Now we useful to interpret how we interpret this data is darker the green, the greater the ETI elicitation. Basically, these are PIDIC, basically our PIDIC disease score values. Now to make it a little bit clearer how we interpret this how we can interpret and explore this data and exploring actually uh, dichotomizing the outcomes. It would be nice to have maybe a cutoff where we can establish what are ETI elicitors versus non-ETI elicitors. To do this, I'll show you here. What we can try to, what we can do is just basically normalize, again, our uh, negative control values, uh, our negative control PIDIC scores, which allow, uh, using a Bothcox transformation, we can actually define something like an alpha significance threshold below which we can score an observation as ETI listening versus not ETI listening. And so this is what everything looks like when we refactor or dichotomize our results. So we just different levels of, of conservation of immunity. Uh, so we have basically three core immune eliciting alleles conserved across the, the Rabidopsis thaliana um, ecotypes. And there's some intermediate, more intermediate and then low conservation. Another thing that we can do with this uh, analysis, we can look for resistance gene loci in Rabidopsis thaliana, potentially novel ones. Here I'm just showing some preliminary analysis that shows the proof of concept that our data does have some biologically informative insights behind it. We can, we can retrieve uh, through GWAS uh, significant uh, uh, SNP hits, uh, sorry, significant hits to uh, known resistance loci against two uh, ETI listening alleles. And this is ongoing work done by, being done by Claire. So to wrap up, in conclusion, I presented a couple of uh, quite powerful tools in our arsenal for, for high throughput screening of uh, pathogen uh, host interactions. The one is uh, PIDIC which is, involves the visual quantification of plant pathogen disease symptoms. Uh, the other one is SciTech, which is our set of molecular probes, which allows us to do high throughput screening of the entire pseudomonas syringae effector realm. Putting these together, we can get some important evolutionary, we're starting to get some important evolutionary insights into the pseudomonas syringae DC3000 and Arabidopsis thaliana pathosystem, uh, which involves the importance of looking at the whole span of effector allelic sequence diversity and also the whole span of host diversity for identifying novel ETIs and coming up with 
uh, new ways and strategies for uh, improving agricultural crop, crop practice, breeding practices in the future. Some present challenges, though, that I've encountered, which I've briefly touched on, maybe you can kind of see where where there are some sticking points in this analysis is that we have a lot of data and variability of responses. We can quantify intermediate ETI responses, which is good, but there's a lot of uh, variability, uh, both technically and biologically. So this requires adequate replication and normalization procedures, which are just starting to develop to properly analyze this data. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge all of the students who've done an enormous amount of work in generating the data, which I'm fortunate enough to be able to analyze and just give you an overview here. And uh, thanks to uh, funding and also the great support of my supervisor, Dr. David Gutman, and as well, Dr. Uh, Daryl DeVoe.